morning, Trains Nation. Welcome to another video episode of Trains Newswire. Today is Friday, December 2nd, 2016. I'm Steve Sweeney. Hi, good morning. Jim Wren here. We've got 46 stories on our Newswire so far this week, including so far. six exclusives. And the day is still young. Steve mm -hmm. and his team will be posting more news as they get it. Yes, absolutely. We're going to get more of those stories up. But top of, top of the news this week, Jim. President-elect Donald Trump has named a, uh, his choice for Secretary of Transportation, Elaine Cho. Uh, really interesting choice. Um, Mrs. Cho or Ms. Cho uh, is, uh, is married to um, Senate leader in the U.S. Senate. She was Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. She was Deputy, Kentucky, yeah. Deputy Secretary of Transportation under uh, George H.W. Bush mm -hmm. back in the late 80s, early 90s. She worked in the Maritime Administration under President Reagan, and she's been in Washington for a very long time. So it's interesting. Be interesting because obviously there were a lot of other choices, a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. batting around the name of John Micah, the yes. congressman who had been uh, very, uh, uh, I don't want to know if critical is the right word, but anyway, he was always on top of Amtrak, doing a lot yes. of what, he, what some people would characterize as micromanaging. But uh, He was dogging him. Anyway, who, yeah. uh, who needs a job after the election and uh, some other folks. But uh, yeah, interesting choice and it'll be curious to see what her position is on rail. We don't know a whole lot about mm -hmm. what, what her experience is or... or um, or knowledge is of railroading business. So uh, we'll be really curious to, to know how that goes over. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll be watching that closely. Uh, we have Bob Edmondson in Washington who's taking, uh, who's watching this all as well as Fred Fraley, Don Phillips, and Bill Stevens. So uh, as It soon takes as, that many people, doesn't it? Well, it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, they all get bits and pieces. I know. I know. Um, They're all circulating in different different uh, groups and a, a different DC. orbits. Yeah. Um, and, and then just following right along from that, Bill Stevens, uh, <coughs> correspondent up in New England, was covering a, uh, uh, a conference uh, with a bunch of Class 1 railroad execs calling into, uh, or he was calling into a conference with a bunch of Class 1 execs, and they said they are upbeat about free trade. They mm -hmm. think that the North American free trade, going, free trade agreement is going to last through a President Trump administration, and even KCS, which depends a lot on Mexico traffic cross-border between it and, uh, and Texas. Uh, they think things are going to go well. So that's interesting to hear, and I'm glad to see that they're excited about it, even though freight traffic continues to sink. Uh, the latest traffic report that we have out this morning says down 2% for the entire year across all, all commodities, 9% for car loads, 2% for intermodal. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bleak. Uh, there, there was a lot of upbeat comments in that story about 2017. I think everybody's sort of looking to turn yeah. a corner here uh, pretty soon, and, uh, you know, obviously... Coal, coal has evaporated yet even further, mm -hmm. and um, you know a lot of folks are, are just curious to see uh, if there is a way to revive the coal traffic. You know if there's ways to reduce um, any sort of regulation on it and make it more popular. But um, we'll we'll see. A lot of a lot of free market um, things going on there with coal too. Yeah, yeah, really interesting. Um, an interesting story too. Uh, Justin Franz, a regular contributor and correspondent of ours, he ended up calling uh, San Francisco Muni. And, and getting more information about the hack attack that happened last Friday, well, Black Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. And in case you hadn't heard, um, that transportation system, San Francisco Muni, was shut down, uh, at least on its computer terminals, for two or three days over the, over the Thanksgiving weekend. And people got free rides all weekend long because a hacker had come in and just taken over the system and demanded like seventy or seventy-five thousand dollars. He, held it, dollars. he yeah. held it hostage. Taking your railroad hostage. Like, uh, well, as Justin said, like a, like a train robber. Yeah. But instead of a six-gun, he had a keyboard. So, oh, dear. Uh, but really interesting information on, uh, on how San Francisco Muni battled that hack attack and, uh, and what exactly they did to restore their system. And the interesting thing, and it's kind of scary, uh, is that people that Justin talked to say that this could become common. Uh, and if you think about it, every transit system in our country, anyway, has some kind of computer system, whether it's payroll or um, fares or regulation or even uh, signals and train control. I know we've seen it happen to some healthcare institutions, oh, yes. some, some hospitals. Uh, they've had their records taken hostage. Right. And um, so, yeah, let this be a lesson to you transit folks out there. Go and put up big firewalls around your computer network. Yeah, absolutely or bricks and mortar or something. Um, Jim, there's actually some kind of interesting news in preservation this week. Was there, were there any, any hits that well, came was, out to you? Yeah, you know, the, the big one, I think, was uh, you know, Duluth and Northeastern mm -hmm. 28 up in, in uh, Duluth, Minnesota at uh, Lake Superior Railroad Museum. They're making progress on the locomotive. Uh, they, they did take the better part of Valor and push that mm -hmm. restoration off to next spring. So, so that's, that's a good thing right there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, take, take your time and do it right. Yeah. You know, no, no reason to rush. Just Absolutely. to let it sit there in the shop during the snowfall. Yes. And then uh, a little bit further south, but also in Minnesota, the, a new one-track trolley mm -hmm. 
uh, had its first run this week. Steve Blashinsky got an exclusive for us on that, which I think was kind of neat. That is cool. Um, I mean, it's, it's uncommon to see something run for the first time again in 78 years. It, just unusual. See Newswire for that. Uh, one other thing before, before we move on to something else. Um, there is a, I wanted your opinion on this. Um, Seattle um, Transit came out with a study that more people are using rail transit than buses. Which I thought was it's pretty amazing. It's unusual. It's amazing. pretty amazing. Unusual. But I, but I will say this. I think I think part of it is the culture of the Pacific Northwest. If mm -hmm. you if you're in Portland or Seattle, you have a lot of people who are in that mindset, and you know who would genuinely like yeah. to get away from their cars. The other thing too is that they make it genuinely easy up there. Now I'm not yeah. as familiar with Seattle as I am Portland, but I know in Portland they make it make it extremely easy for you to use public transportation, either a streetcar. Mm -hmm or a light rail vehicle or a, or a traditional commuter train. Unlike Milwaukee's transit system. We got one? We do? Oh my God. I didn't know. I didn't know. Well, we're going to have well one. hidden. <laughs> we, we will have one. It has buses and I I'll guess we'll have to go check out their Facebook have, page. Have a trolley somewhere. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Locomotive. Remember this, Jim? I love that this magazine. Is cool. um, we're going to transition into trivia in a second here, but the, the, the neatest thing is um, every time I go back to Locomotive, I find something else new. And of course, I was an editor on this um, several months ago. But man, look at this. Look at this. That's pretty. In the, uh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Um, Canyon up in Canada. Is that, Absolutely. Is that uh, Thompson? Or it's Frank? Thompson Canyon. Okay. Yeah, it's Thompson, Thompson Canyon. Nice. Uh, way up in, in uh, British Columbia, right? Right. Yeah. And and our, own, uh, our own Drew, Drew Halverson went up there and photographed and wrote this story about the uh, which, traffic up there. Which is, uh, which is an absolutely amazing story. And what these locomotives have to go through to, um, well, to make it back and forth through the canyon. They've got some pretty steep grades in there. They've got boulders falling down. And, but here's the, the best thing is the amazing photography to go with the story. You won't find that anywhere else. It's fabulous. Yeah. You won't find it anywhere else. So, um, so the person who answered last week's question correctly will get a copy of Locomotive 2016, and that person, um, that person was Caleb Metzger. And the question, Caleb, that you answered correctly was, name the short line that uh, is helping BNSF Railway to haul minerals to a coal mine in British Columbia. So uh, Caleb Metzger. Um, the name of that railroad, by the way, is the Mission Mountain Railroad. Uh, I believe it's a GNW subsidiary. So Caleb, you get copy of Locomotive 2016, send your name and your address to me at newswire at trainsmag.com. The email address is newswire at trainsmag.com. Now, if you have not been selected on air, don't send me your name and address because that can sometimes be confusing if I've got a lot of things going on. If you haven't won, don't send me your name and email. But if you have won and you're Caleb Metzger this week, send me your name and email address to newswire at trainsmag.com. This week's trivia question comes right from Newswire again. And the question is, um, and it's in, it's, it's in the story, why did the managers at St. Paul Union Depot in St. Paul, Minnesota, extend what is being called a tail track? Just, just what is it? What, why did they extend this track? What is the purpose going to be for it, especially this December? Uh, you can find it in Newswire. And uh, if you find the answer, and you want to answer correctly, put it in the comments section below our video on the, uh, on the Newswire video homepage, down below here, comment section down there. Not on Facebook, not on Twitter, but here on the comments page. And you will win, or have a chance at winning Locomotive 2016. So it's really cool. Hey, you and I are uh, out on the town next week. We should talk about that. Uh, absolutely, we should. We are going to be live streaming the Canadian Pacific Holiday Train. Uh, mm -hmm. Brian Schmidt is going to be your host on Monday afternoon. Mm -hmm. Be sure and check out the website for times and locations. Mm -hmm. And uh, then on uh, Tuesday, Steve and I will be mm -hmm. tag teaming the uh, CP Holiday Train as it makes its way west out of Milwaukee. That's right. You're going to start in Wauwatosa, I believe. I'll be starting in Tosa, and then you're going to pick it up over in... Um, uh, be I believe in Columbus, Columbus yeah. Wisconsin. And that's a really nice place. They have a great, great little small town depot and a lot of... Uh, well, it's a green elevator. It's a nice place. You'll, you'll love the small town uh, charm, and all the lights are going to reflect off the buildings. really cool. So, so I hope you enjoy that. It's going to be a nice show, so uh, be sure and tune in on that. Yeah, absolutely. Check out the website. Check out the website and, and keep watching us. Well, Jim... I think we're done. Let's take it home. We're just about done. We're almost to the anniversary edition of Newswire Video. Mm -hmm. Check back next week for something special. Steve and I have been working on this and thinking about it for a long time. Yes, we have. Here you go. Take care. So we're talking about bands.
We're talking about bands. We're getting the band back together. Well, I'd like to. Yeah. I'd like to. I called the I called the same uh, I called the same guy that uh, manages Bob Dylan. Yeah. And he said he'd get back to us same day. Right. Once we have some confirmation. So okay. we called out to, you know, like Steely Dan. Well, that's good. The Rolling Stones and some other guys. They're available. Well, he didn't say they that. They played that private party not long ago in New England. You know, yeah. for the guy that owns the Patriots. Yeah. So, so why couldn't they do it? They us? could do it for That's us. That's what I thought. They could do it for That's us. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, but the, the folks that I know are available, um, there is, um, for what we're willing to pay, mm -hmm. there is uh, half of a Salvation Army bell ringing choir. That's pretty good. I like that. That's not bad. Uh, we also have the Kenosha Kickers. They're a polka band. They're from oh. all the VFWs between Sheboygan and Baraboo. Holy smoker! I love the polka! No, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and also, we only have to feed these guys, the, um, the Shriners All Saxophone Band. Mm. Well, from the, from the soprano saxes on all the way up to the big bass sax. Let me think about this. Right, so no. We got those guys. I like this.